Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. And let me give you a disclaimer. This is a video that I have posted on Tuesday, but this doesn't mean that I am back every week with Draw Tip Tuesday videos. Currently, I am taking a break from a lot of things. I'm hitting pause and I'm actually hitting the reset button. I'm recalibrating and I'm really trying to figure out what's next for me and um, including Draw Tip Tuesdays. Is that included in the path that I will take or not? I'm posting this here on a Tuesday. Don't expect me to do this every week again because I am not ready for that if I ever will be again um, because I'm still figuring out what my path will be, where I want to put my energy and time because that is really what I'm very mindful of now. But I do really, really appreciate everyone who is following me here and who comments about all the videos that I have put out here. Um, and um, I kind of miss you. <laughs> so here I am with a video. And that's actually because last week I posted a painting that I did because I'm learning to paint. And I'm doing it on a, my own pace and it's a self-study and it's really wonderful that I can actually do this. But I did a little painting of a tangerine um, with gouache. I got almost 4,000 likes. That never happened to me on an Instagram post. So um, I figured, you know what, I'll show you guys how I actually did this because it's not that hard. It's actually simple. It's a little bit messy. The process, I'll show you. For today's Draw Tip Tuesday, um, there's one rule. And the rule is that with every brush stroke that you make, you need to mix a new color. And it can be like a tiny difference, but you cannot use one color twice on your painting. So tip number one, make something small, do a small painting because otherwise you'll be hours and you'll be mixing lots of paints. Um, and tip number two, uh, do something that is quite simple and has a primary or a secondary color, like a tangerine, which is orange, which is a secondary color. So the mixing won't be too involving, is that the right word? So those are my two tips before you get started. You can use acrylic paint, you can use gouache. I don't know about watercolor, I wouldn't necessarily try this, but maybe you can from dark to light perhaps. I'm not quite sure how that would work out, but if you want to try, let me know how it goes. If you don't have any of those paints and you do have an iPad with Procreate on it, then try that. It's a lot less messy and it's the same thing. You just pick a new color with each brush stroke and um, you can try that. Okay, I have talked enough. <laughs> you see my face, that's good. Hi again. Let's, uh, let's paint. I'm using Hanemühle watercolor paper today. It's hot pressed, but more importantly, when painting with gouache, your paper should be heavy, at least 200 or 250 grams. And this one is 300 grams. For this brush stroke exercise, I want to cover some ground with each stroke. So I am using a flat brush. This is a number 10, but whatever you have will do. For gouache, it's best to use a synthetic brush as opposed to watercolor painting. You don't want the brush to soak up a lot of liquid. Always have a paper towel at hand and clean water. I'm using some very basic colors and put dots of paint on my palette. I am going to give you some more disclaimers here. I am not an expert and most of the time I have no idea what I'm doing here as I am painting. So I am adding the names of the colors that I chose, but please don't copy me. Just use whatever colors you have and that feel right to paint your subject. I start by drawing my subject. You can do this with pencil if you like, but I like to make a quick sketch using paint. I am watering down my paint. It's as thin as watercolor. 
When you are layering gouache paint, it's important to use watered down paint for the first layer and then on top of that, use thicker paint. If your paint for the sketch is too thick, you will reactivate the paint when adding a next layer and that will mix with the color you are putting on top. I'm also including the drop shadow in my sketch. Now let the exercise begin! Remember, the rule of this game is that you have to mix a new color for each brush stroke. Your paint should feel creamy and not too dry. When you get rough edges when painting, you might want to dip just the tip of your brush in the water to make your paint a bit creamier and easier to move around, just a little bit. Of course, what I see is the color orange, but take a closer look. There are so many shades of orange. The left side of the tangerine catches most light, so that side has the brightest orange. It also has some white highlights, but we'll take care of that later. With gouache, you can add highlights at the end, as opposed to watercolor, where the white of the paper plays a very important role for the highlights. And on the right-hand side of the tangerine, the orange is brownish, but I also see more of a greenish shade at the bottom where it's a bit lighter again too, because the white of the table reflects onto the skin of the tangerine. This exercise really makes you look and think before every brushstroke that you make. And I am showing you this as a time lapse because this video is not about how to mix the right colors, it's about the fun and the joy of challenging yourself and about slowing down so that you see a lot more than you see at first, second and even third glance. The more you look at your subject, the more color variations you discover. I just keep on mixing a little bit of yellow here, a bit of red there, just to give a little or a lot of variation to every brush stroke. With my painting, I am definitely not capturing that bright orange of the actual tangerine, and that might be because of the colors that I chose. I don't know quite yet enough about paint colors, but it's working anyway. With every stroke I am creating a sense of depth, and I am painting a tangerine in this fun, blocky style, and I like it. Time to clean my palette a little bit and change my water. Now let's also take a look at the drop shadow. The back of the shadow, where it catches some daylight from my window, is actually quite bright blue. Do you see that? I even see purple, a darkish bluish purple and a violet kind of grey. Time for the background. Is it white? Of course it is, but it isn't. For this white background, I will also mix a tiny different variation for each brush stroke. It will bring a lot of life to it. I see yellowish, bluish, bluish grey, violet, beige. Also, painting a background gives you the opportunity to make little corrections or changes to the shape of your subject. And now that I painted the background, I think the drop shadow is actually too much of a contrast. I want the tangerine to be the subject, not the shadow. So I am adding a thin, lighter layer on top to soften that shadow. I'm doing it very carefully so I don't reactivate and mix the underlaying layer too much. Last but not least, I'll add the highlights. I am breaking the rules because for the highlights I am just adding plain white and I am not mixing a new color for each stroke. Why? Because I like breaking the rules and also I'm out of patience. Okay, it takes a while to do this because brush stroke mix, brush stroke mix, brush stroke mix and in the meantime you also have to clean your brush and all that. But I think it's a really nice process. And it's a really good way to uh, get to know your paints. I now think that I know that the red that I chose wasn't the right kind of red, so I might, you know, try another one next time. So it's good to, to get to know your colors. It's really good to slow down and really look at what you see. 
purple, bright blue. Um, I saw so many colors in that shadow. It was just really exciting. And I wouldn't have maybe seen that if I wouldn't have slowed down and ha had to think about every stroke that I made. Anyway, I hope you will try this and uh, let me know how it goes. Not sure when I will put out the next Draw Tip Tuesday video, but um, I'll keep you posted. How about that? All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.